If you're a student of advertising like me, then there is really no better way to learn your craft than by studying great ads of the past. But today we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be looking at some horrendously out of date ads instead. Before we start though, just to warn you, some of these really are pretty far out and will be banned immediately today. By sharing them, I'm not condoning their message at all. We'll come back to the message later on. First on the chopping block today, the very ad that made me record this video. The headline says, Romance dies at the touch of dishpan hands. Now the overall message in this ad is obviously that it's the woman's job to do the dishes but the resulting sore hands risks killing the romance with her new husband. So in an effort to continue doing the dishes whilst not being responsible for the death of her romance, she has to buy this product. Now obviously this concept of hands raw from doing dishes and tying it to marriage was a real concern because I found multiple ads along these lines. Here we see another one. I wept on my first wedding anniversary when Henry slipped a lovely gift ring on my finger I sobbed it's too pretty for my red dishwashy hands. I mean it's an old advertising cliche that you want to sell the benefits of the products rather than the feature so certainly I guess in some way selling the savior of your marriage for like the cost of dishwasher soap is reasonable but luckily for the traditional housewife both men and dishwashers have managed to learn to do the dishes in the last 60 years. This next one is almost unbelievable. This is an ad for 7up. Now this 7up ad from 1955 is seeking to reassure parents that not only is 7up safe for their 11 month old babies, it's actually desirable and if the baby won't take milk, then you can mix it with 7up. <laughs> It's a wholesome combination. Now there's another ad doing the rounds online along these lines. This example Coke ad that says, for a better start in life, start cola earlier. How soon is too soon? Not soon enough. Laboratory tests over the last few years have proven that babies who start drinking soda during early formative years have a much better chance of gaining acceptance and fitting in during those awkward pre-teen and teen years. So do yourself a favor, get your child started on sugary carbonated beverages right now. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your angle, this ad is a fake. Yes, the Soda Pop Board of America did not create this ad and this was never a legitimate ad, it was created as a project. Nevertheless, why stop at 7up? This Mattel ad declares that the M16 Marauder not only looks great, but it sounds great. Now, Marauder, what? really? Did you know the definition of Marauder? Someone who goes from place to place looking for people to kill. Oh, no. Mm. Okay, something a little bit less sinister. This ad is for a larder and it looks to me like a larder reaver. It declares that the headlamp wash wipe, rear seat belts, interior adjustable door mirrors, these are all things that you'd expect on a luxury car. Now it's kind of funny selling these features on a car, particularly when a car looks like that because they are so commonplace that they're completely standard now. Funny story about the larder reaver. And my nan actually had one of these and she inquired about getting a car alarm fitted. The salesman actually actually told her, don't worry, it's pointless, nobody would want to steal this. <laughs> Seriously, the salesman refused to sell her a car alarm because nobody would want to steal it. <laughs> Let's head to the workplace now, because grey hair cost her her job. She was willing and capable, but grey hair made her look old and slow. A younger woman would work more snappily was the verdict. Fired for grey hair. I mean, the fact that they could even imply that that was a legitimate thing raises all sorts of questions about HR policies and discrimination. But also, performance management. I mean, what sort of company bases their team hiring and firing decisions on the colour of their hair? Really? What was going on? Here's someone with grey hair who doesn't seem to be doing too badly because apparently more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Now, this is wildly hailed as one of those ads that proclaims that smoking is healthy. But actually... This ad never claims that smoking is healthy. It just implies that it is by using the doctor for credibility. This ad describes a survey of 113,000 doctors to find out what the most common brand that these doctors smoked was. And it turns out it was Camel. Now we carry out a fair few surveys at Exposure Ninja, but 113,000 respondents Back in these days, that was not easy to do. That's a high budget monster of a study to carry out. It's almost like the cigarette companies were trying to hide something. Hmm, why stop at cigarettes? Kid got toothache, try cocaine. 
Now there was a great ad run by Ogilvy in the 60s which is touted as an example of a fantastic benefits driven ad to sell Volkswagen Beetles called the Lemon Ad. Now this ad is a similar one from the same era but this one doesn't get so much coverage and there's a very good reason because this ad is horrendous. Sooner or later your wife will drive home one of the best reasons for owning a Volkswagen. Women are soft and gentle but they hit things. If your wife hits something in a Volkswagen it doesn't hurt you very much. Vito VW parts are easy to replace and cheap, which means most other VW parts are interchangeable too, inside and out, which means your wife isn't limited to fender smashing. She can jab the hood, graze the door, bump off the bumper. It may make you furious, but it won't make you poor. So when your wife goes window shopping in a Volkswagen, don't worry, you can conveniently replace anything she uses to stop the car even the brakes. I mean, it's mental. Now this ad was actually so offensive, even in 1964, that it was cancelled by furious Volkswagen female drivers, obviously. And by the way, if you're getting the impression that women are having a pretty hard ride of this, then Exactly. A lot of the most horrendously out of date ads target women. Here's another example. Blow in her face and she'll follow you anywhere, as long as you're smoking a tip lit cigarette. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. How about body shaming? Picture of a pair, this is no shape for a girl. Obviously, the message is that there is an unnatural shape for a woman and if you happen to be that shape, then you must buy this product in order to fit to presumably men's standards of what women should look like. And obviously, this product is actually not a million miles away from Spanx, but the message is very, very different. Don't wanna wear shaping underwear? Well, back to our old hero, the cigarette, because you can just smoke instead of eating sweets that will make you fat. According to Constance Talmadge, who was an influencer of the time, and it had to be lucky strikes, because apparently beautiful women keep youthful slenderness by smoking luckies. Try saying that five times while smoking a lucky. And the basic gist of this is that the cigarettes keep you slim because they stop you eating sweets. Now interestingly, keeping slim is one of the main reasons that people use to stop smoking today. So this smoking makes you thin argument is still prevalent, and it's, it would be interesting to know how much of that comes from old campaigns like this which sold the benefits which sold the argument of cigarettes equals thin in a very dubious way okay so what does all this mean well it's well accepted that a good effective ad plays into the fears and desires of the audience that's what it needs to do in order to motivate the audience to action but isn't it interesting to see how as society has evolved those fears and desires have also evolved and some of the conversations going on here you'd never see this stuff out in the public now and rightly so because there are some real serious prejudices and discriminations going on but all of this got me thinking that some of these ads were running 50 60 years ago which isn't actually that long ago so what are the ads that we're running today which in 40 50 60 years time will be thinking that is horrendous that would never run and are today's ads destined for tomorrow's scrap heap in the way that these old school ads talking to a very very different time looks so uncomfortable and ridiculous to us now and obviously today our society is having really profound conversations about gender and body image and discrimination and race and it's clear that we as a society still have work to do in these areas so it got me thinking what are the ads what are the messages what are the product that we will look back on and say mm, that really doesn't fit what are the ads and the products that are going to be in this video in 20 years time I mean for example this is no shape for a girl. That message is kind of implied in a lot of advertising today. It may not be stated explicitly, but the message that women must fit a certain shape in order to be acceptable to men is kind of everywhere. I mean, this product essentially looks like Spanx, and obviously Spanx is marketed in a very different way. But in the future, where we look at products like Spanx, which are designed to mold someone to fit somebody else's impression of what right looks like, will we look at that as a relic of the past? <laughs> I don't know, and nobody else does. But I think it's a really interesting question. What is for sure, though, is that we are clearly making progress on some of these issues. The fact that these ads today jar so much is really, I think, something to be celebrated and something to be grateful for. So I hope you've enjoyed this little journey into some horrendously out-of-date ads. I actually feel like we can be quite proud of the progression that we're making and some of the progressive conversations that we're having today. So here's hoping that we've got a bunch more unacceptable ads to consign 
into the scrap heap of history as we move forward. So if you've enjoyed this video and you enjoy thinking like a marketer, consider subscribing to the channel. Drop me a comment as well. I'm really interested to know, are there any other ads which make your toes curl with embarrassment? And what are the ads, products or messages that you think we're running today as a society which actually in the future we'll look back on and think, oh, that's really not cool. See you soon.